Welcome to this dental health video. Physical health and oral health go hand in hand in promoting overall well-being, especially for people living with HIV. Oral health symptoms for this population can indicate a decline in immune function. Oral health problems can make it difficult to chew or swallow, impacting nutritional status or the ability to take HIV medications, which are key factors in maintaining overall health. As a case manager for people living with HIV, you can help your clients reach their goals of good oral health and good overall health. We want to know, um, do they have insurance or access to dental care? And when they last saw a dentist, you know, what maybe what their past dental care has been. And then questions like, are you having any pain? Are you missing teeth? You know, any problem areas? I do a visual exam to look for, you know, any problem areas, anything abnormal. White patches, you know, which could be thrush, which is an opportunistic infection that you get um, if your T cell count is real low. It's very important for the clients to follow their medication regimen uh, because that might lead to a change in their CD4 and viral load numbers, which then clinically we see uh, oral manifestations that might arise, uh, such as candidiasis or thrush, um, leukoplakia, those kinds of things that as a clinician we need to be aware of. So it's really important and helpful for the patient's overall well-being to uh, also have a healthy mouth. Lab results are a vital source of information for case managers and medical providers. This information is also important for dental professionals. Labs are typically drawn every three to six months and pertinent information includes CD4 count, viral load, white blood cell count, absolute neutrophil count, and platelet count. The viral load and CD4 count are important indicators of the effectiveness of the client's drug regimen. The goal is for a high CD4 count and a low viral load. The CD4 count and the viral load lets the dental provider know where in the HIV continuum the HIV patient is currently. If the CD4 count is below 400, the patient is more likely to exhibit certain oral manifestations such as candidiasis. White blood cell count and absolute neutrophil count are very important information for the dental professional as these numbers can indicate the patient's ability to undergo an invasive procedure like an extraction or a root canal. The patient's CD4 count, viral load and white blood cell count and absolute neutrophil count all help the dental professional determine how to best provide care for the patient. Your clients might feel embarrassed about their oral health or may be uncomfortable sharing the condition of their mouth. Non-judgment helps in fostering a good relationship with your clients that is based on mutual trust. By talking about these issues in gentle, client-centered ways, you can help your clients feel more comfortable. I think it's really important to build that sense of trust so that you can help them get the best medical care and services that are available to the client. A lot of building rapport is just talking, listening, having really good listening skills, meeting the client where they're at and that's not passing judgment on them, it's not telling them what they need to do or not do, it's listening what their needs are and helping them get needs met by what they're reporting to you. According to the Centers for Disease Control, 33% of Americans have untreated tooth decay. Support your clients in setting achievable oral health goals. There are three important areas to be mindful of when working with clients. Prevention, examination, and referral. When it comes to prevention, the American Dental Association recommends brushing teeth twice a day with fluoride toothpaste. Toothbrushes should be replaced every three to four months or sooner if the bristles are frayed. Flossing is another essential practice. Decay-causing bacteria can linger between teeth and out of reach of the brush bristles. A mouth rinse containing fluoride helps to inhibit bacterial activity and fight the production of plaque. Keeping up with oral health can also help keep your client's sexual partners healthy. Cold sores, cuts, or lesions in the mouth can increase the risk of transmitting HIV. To avoid transmission of HIV and other infections, advise your clients to avoid engaging in oral sex immediately following brushing, flossing, or teeth cleaning, or if they have an open sore in their mouth. As an HIV case manager, you have a unique opportunity to help your clients establish better oral health habits. Talk with your clients regularly about their current oral health regimen and offer support and guidance for how they can improve and maximize the time they spend taking care of their oral health. 
You may find that your clients feel overwhelmed with the management of their HIV and don't feel like they have the time or energy for additional oral health care. Supporting clients in keeping up with what they're currently doing and adding one additional step at a time can go a long way in helping clients reach their oral health goals. Encourage your clients to start with brushing once a day and rinsing once a day with a fluoride rinse if they're not doing this already. As they become comfortable with this and are able to do this every day, encourage them to brush twice a day or begin flossing once a day. Every step will help them achieve better oral health, which will ultimately lead to better overall health. The head and neck exam is an important aspect of the annual client assessment. I want you to look in the mirror okay. and to be looking for changes for your head and neck. Oh, okay. Then we're going to next go to the face. Okay, so you're going to look all around your face and look for any changes, new moles, that kind of thing. You actually have a mole there and we want to look and see if that's changing. There are numerous oral health conditions that can occur in all people, including those living with HIV. For people living with HIV, these manifestations can indicate a change in the immune system. Since the advent of heart, highly active antiretroviral therapy, clients are living longer, healthier lives with fewer symptoms. Not all HIV clients will experience the following oral health conditions. However, these conditions can impact their susceptibility to pain and infection, nutrition, and adherence to medication. Xerostomia is defined as dry mouth resulting from reduced or absent saliva flow. It is a major contributing factor in dental decay. Approximately 30 to 40 percent of HIV infected individuals experience moderate to severe dry mouth in association with the effects of their medications. Dry mouth is a major cause of gum disease and tooth loss in three out of every ten adults. If left untreated, xerostomia decreases the oral pH and significantly increases the development of plaque and dental caries. Fluoride treatments are necessary to help prevent rapid decay. There are products available to manage severe xerostomia. It is important to be aware of what is available to give your patients symptomatic relief. Encourage your patients to sip water or sugarless drinks often. Avoid drinks with caffeine such as coffee, teas, and some sodas. Caffeine can dry out the mouth. Sip water or a sugarless drink during meals. This will make chewing and swallowing easier and may also improve the taste of food. Chew sugarless gum or suck on sugarless hard candy to stimulate saliva flow. Citrus, cinnamon, or mint flavored candies are good choices. Not to use tobacco or alcohol as they can dry out the mouth. Be aware that spicy or salty foods may cause pain in a dry mouth. Use a humidifier at night. Periodontal disease, also known as gum disease, is an infection that attacks the bone and gums that support the teeth. People living with HIV are more at risk to periodontal disease and may face more severe and rapid forms of this disease. This can include linear gingivitis, erythema, and necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. Necrotizing periodontitis is characterized by the rapid destruction of soft tissue in the mouth and is an indication of severe immune suppression. The condition is characterized by severe pain, loosening of teeth, bleeding, fetid odor, ulcerated gingival papilla, and rapid loss of bone and soft tissue. Patients often refer to the pain as deep jaw pain. Candidiasis, commonly referred to as thrush, is an infection caused by yeast on the skin and on mucous membranes. When the infection occurs in the mouth, it is called thrush. Thrush is caused by a fungus named Candida albicans, which grows out of control and causes painful lesions, usually on the inner cheeks and tongue, but can also spread to the roof of the mouth, gums, tonsils, and throat. Symptoms can include fissuring of the corners of the mouth, whiteness of the tongue, and white patches on the cheeks that are not easily scraped off. It can persist for an extensive period of time if left untreated. Oral hairy leukoplakia, which is caused by Epstein-Barr virus, presents as white, corrugated lesions along the sides of the tongue and cannot be wiped away. This condition is normally asymptomatic and does not require therapy unless there are cosmetic concerns. However, it is important to note that the condition is observed with immune deterioration and that patients presenting with it while on antiretroviral therapy may be thus experiencing failure of their current regimen. Herpes. In most cases, oral herpes causes lesions in the mouth and lips that are commonly referred to as cold sores or fever blisters. Symptoms include painful blisters on the lips or under the nose that ulcerate and crust over and are fairly easy to recognize. 
Oral ulcers that present on keratinized tissues, such as the roof of the mouth, are usually herpetic. Human papillomavirus. The most common forms of the virus produce warts on the hands, arms, legs, and other areas of the skin. The wart-like growths are called condyloma tissues. Condyloma tissue appears like a small cauliflower-type growth on the skin and may be spiked or raised with a flat surface. These growths are usually painless but can cause some irritation, itching, or burning. It can be treated whenever it flares up and is non-malignant. Most HPVs of this type are very common, harmless, non-cancerous, and easily treatable. Kaposi sarcoma is a cancerous tumor of connective tissue and is often associated with HIV. It is caused by an interaction between HIV, a weakened immune system, and the human herpes virus number 8. The tumors appear as bluish, red, or purple sores or lesions on the skin. Early lesions tend to be flat, red, and asymptomatic, with the color becoming darker as the lesion ages. Diagnosis is frequently missed in African-American patients due to lesion coloration. Oral cancer is a type of head and neck cancer that affects the mouth. It can form in the lining of the cheeks, gums, roof of the mouth, tongue, and lips, and is more common in the users of tobacco products than in non-users. The patient may complain of a mouth sore that fails to heal or that bleeds easily, or a persistent white or red or mixed patch. The patient may note a lump, a thickening or soreness in the mouth, throat, or tongue, difficulty chewing or swallowing food, difficulty moving the jaw or tongue, chronic hoarseness, numbness of the tongue or other areas of the mouth, or a swelling of the jaw causing dentures to fit poorly or become uncomfortable. As the medical case manager performs the head and neck exam, any changes, lesions, or abnormalities should be noted. Refer the client to their dentist or their primary care physician to follow up on any issues noticed. Case managers are key players in helping their clients achieve better oral health. The tools that you provide to your clients can help them achieve their oral health goals. This may be as simple as giving a client a toothbrush or congratulating a client for a cavity-free dental visit. If you have any questions about any of the information presented here, please feel free to contact us.